All right, so here we can copy paste our previously made basic generic material here, Ctrl Z and Ctrl V and oh, Alt 4 and we can hook it up here and all our metal is gone. Oh no! <laughs> That's an easy fix. We can we can fix it super easily. And here comes a pretty handy feature and why I like to assign the Lambert materials. So we have here the selection groups. We can pin it here for a moment. And here in the node graph, P on the keyboard. And we want to create here, let's go for 4K and fully black and scalar because we are creating a mask. We can hook it up here into the mask slot and hopefully all our metal will be back again. You look at that. So I like to have my mask stuff always over the merge node so I can easily see, oh look, that's a mask which is driving here, the merge one. So here in the viewport, when you press S on the keyboard, you are in the selection tool here. And here on the selection groups, which we made with the Lambert assignment in Maya, we can click here on the yellow one and it will select everything oh, F for frame it. It will select all the parts which we want to have as yellow. Okay, so here right click in the viewport, fill and fill with white. Give it a second and double click in the viewport and we can see we have masked out here the material. So we can close this one here, don't need it anymore. And rename this one here to yellow. Cool. And jump into it with control and double click here. And we already know here this setup. We can go here for the color and choose a nice yellow color. Let's go here for, for yellow. Yeah, it's a bit too green. Maybe something like that, maybe a bit more orange. Yeah, I think that that's, that's cool. Let's go here for 45. And here we have now a yellow robot. Same as before. So we have it here as black. It's not a metal. Metal. It's not a metal. And here our roughness. Let's define here our base roughness. We can go for a bit more a glossy one. Maybe, let's see how it looks like on 10. I like that for now. And we can look what we have in our folder for a few nice surface breakups. I think this one is cool, this one, this one, this one as well. Let's drag it over here. Give it a moment. And as soon as it is in here, we need to define it as scalar because we want to have the color data here as data or as as a, as a number so it, it's actually driving a number from the RGB values so let's have a look what we have here this one is definitely a cool one this one is cool as well this oh I like this one here let's start with this one. Select M on the keyboard and over it 
double click and here we definitely want to have it as a screen. We only want to keep the white information. We don't need the black one. So here I hope you can see it in the video. Something is going on here. I mean, we can make it even more glossy here. Not perfectly, like a mirror. Something like that, I guess. Let's go for five. All right, let's tile this one here a bit more. Let's go for two. Very nice. So we can say, hey, I don't like this this light here. We can, it's the environment one. We can rotate it here. To see how it looks like. Great, I'm happy so far. So for the base bump here, often when you have a color on top of that, you have a slight amount of a wobbly bump going on. So no surface out there is perfectly flat and we can mimic that by insert here a new merge node and type in uh, what was it cloud insert it here into the over and we want to have it as overlay give it a moment it's loading it in the gpu yeah, look, now we have here a super rough, bumpy surface, but we want to have it as an overlay. So the black is going inside and the white is going outside. We can also look through that node by selecting it and press a uh, number on the keyboard. I prefer to uh, press the 2, so it will look uh, auto-saving. It will look now through that node, and that's how, how the data is looking here. So let's go here for the cloud and adjust this one here a bit. So we don't want to have it super rough. We want to have it a bit more smooth and tile it more often. So if you want to visit and look through the shader again, sadly it's not possible here inside from the material node graph. We need to go outside again. I hope they will improve that on an update. Select here our um, shader node and press 1 on the keyboard and we can jump in here again so this is almost what I want but not as strong let's go here for the merge node and dial it back by a lot just a tiny bit so photorealism is achieved by a collection and layering of small subtle details so I like that, maybe even a bit less. Yes, that's, that's cool. But we want to have it a bit more um, interesting. We can go here for another merge. Let's bring it back a bit. And let's see how, um, how it looks like when we insert our roughness map here as well. So when it comes to texturing, very often it is a bit of trial and error and play around with the settings, play around with the textures and gain some experience, what looks good, what doesn't look good and yeah, try out some things. Here overlay. I think we can we can have that on our mesh here, but not that strong. Just as a tiny detail here. When we render it later, it will it will add a bit of, of breakup of the of the light here on the surface, which is actually pretty cool to have. Nice, I like that. So we can also add here a bit of uh and break up in the color map and we can also use here this texture to drive that so there are multiple ways to do that that's that's a cool thing about the node graph you can you can use 
super super many a lot whatever <laughs> techniques to create um, your your setup so i will show you one here by selecting here the node m on the keyboard zoom in a bit and with control it will bring up here these little dots by pressing on it we have created a dot node so now type in HSV for HSV node, hook it up here to the stream and to the over. And we want to use here this texture to drive. We can make it here a bit bigger so it's a bit easier to drive here the mask input slot. Let's go back. And now we can play around here with the HSV node. And the cool thing about that is if we change here the input node, it's 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 piping through all that stuff and we don't have to paint it again. And hopefully Mario doesn't crash. Cool, it doesn't crash. So now let's have a look what we can do. So we can desaturate here a bit. Or we can boost up the saturation. We can also change it here a bit in color. But I don't want to have it that strong. As I said, it's just a collection of different small details which makes in the end the texture interesting. Let's make it even a bit less, but I like the settings here, so we can go here on to the merge node and bring back a bit the opacity, something like that. As I said, you can go with values whatever you like, so you can make it green, you can make it blue, whatever you want. That's that's the cool thing, so it's it's really procedural way here of creating the stuff. So I think for the yellow material, for now, that's it. We can go outside and bake it as well here again with a multi-channel bake point. 4K, 8-bit, fine. Input. Nope. Output here into the over. Double click and bake active. And really nice, it's almost baked. <laughs> and come on, one more time. And it's baked. So in the next video, we will create our first smart mask, which you maybe know from Substance Painter. So we are doing the same magic, but by our own, and create some cool looking edge, edge wear here on the edges. <laughs> Genius like. Okay, see you in the next video.